Natasha Narwal, you've got one minute. Why do you believe, and this is what we're looking at today, why do you believe that the original High Court judgment protecting the right to dissent should be allowed to remain? Uh, I think that judgment uh, should remain and be upheld is because the way it uh, exposes this whole uh, way of being of, uh, of the state of using laws like UAPA and or, or be it sedition uh, to stifle the voices of dissent in this country today and to put people behind bars in such under such stringent laws that bail is like the rule the rule that ba uh, jail is an exception and bail is a rule is completely overturned on its head and even the premise of that you are innocent until proven guilty is also turned on in on its head so it is it is really really important that this order uh, gets upheld and uh, so that as the High Court order itself says, the line between the right to protest and raise your voice against policies of the government are not conflated with anti-national terrorist activities. Okay. Devangana, your one minute starts now. Yeah, I also firstly would like to thank the Delhi High Court because of whom we are out today and I can be home today sitting here speaking to you. And... Uh, in, in fact, it was not, we didn't believe that we might actually be out. So it is quite a relief and that we are going to stay out for some time. And uh, yeah, we hope that uh, it's welcome that the Supreme Court has opened the matter for observation. And there will be larger consideration about this act, which has incarcerated so many uh, uh, so many activists and so many people inside prison and we hope more people don't have to see this fate that we had to see over the last one year and which many people continue to see inside prison. All right. So, yeah. All right. We'll come back to both of you as we start the debate. But first, let me go across to the senior Supreme Court lawyer, Colin Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez, you've got one minute for your opening remarks. Go ahead, sir. Well, I would disagree with the Supreme Court order passed today even though that order doesn't stay the High Court order, but the observations that you cannot cite this as a precedent and it will not be used in any court, in any proceeding in this country, is extraordinary and is totally uncalled for. And I say this because any interference by the Supreme Court can only be on the basis that there is an error in the High Court judgment. And I say to all those present here today, and this is the question we must ask the country, which line of that judgment is wrong? Which words used are wrong? There is nothing, the High Court concludes, there's no incitement to an offence, there's no overt act, there's no criminal activity at all. And the only thing that they've done is speak out against the government. So if there is no mistake in the order, okay. the Supreme Court had no business interfering with it. All right. T.R. Kakkar, your first remarks. Should the Delhi High Court order be allowed to remain as it is? You see, the matter went before the Delhi High Court for grant of bail. Uh, Delhi High Court in its, in its zeal has totally annulled the charge sheet rather the, the offences cited in the, in the charge sheet are true or not or valid or not is to be decided ultimately by the trial court. This is an overreach as far as I am concerned and that is why the Supreme Court felt that there has to be further look into it they have not outright rejected the appeal of the uh, Delhi police to say that you have no case. Obviously, there is a case and they, so far as the implementation or so far as the uh, applying this particular judgment of Delhi High Court in other cases has practically been stayed. It is only the bail that, okay. uh, that uh, has not been sort of... Uh, uh, Stop. Right. So okay, sir, I'm interrupting you. Your one minute is over. I wanted to go across to Pinky Anand. Ma'am, your one minute starts now. Go ahead. Uh, Vishnu, what I really think is that in this case, I think we are diverting from the total issue. 
the question of bail itself is something which has been accepted by both the sides and basically the parties are out on bail and that is based on completely different parameters rather than to go into the merits of the matter so the question is whether uapa is constitutionally valid or not valid that is something which is not really there for a bail court to decide that has to be decided by an appropriate court and possibly appropriate jurisdiction and that is exactly the reason why supreme court said that let the bail let the parties be released on bail but let the high court order be stayed in so far as being cited as a precedent is concerned because you can't jeopardize the implementation of the uapa act which is one of the principal acts dealing with the sovereignty and anti terrorist activities so we can't really go into that larger question in a bail matter and it is very fortunate that the supreme court stepped in to ultimately grant the bail uphold the bail but at the same time state as a precedent